So as an artist, I would say I am definitely an early jazz and blues, or early music nerd in some ways, but I'm particularly interested in vocal technique and the women that were pioneering a lot of this music. So that's my passion and my main driver. And from that, I've gone down several rabbit holes where I've discovered completely unheard of, of ladies. Um, a lot of them had died quite young. Um, and from there, I, I did keep going down, down to the rabbit hole and then further, further back to the point where I'm now looking at some songs from 1815, for example. Um, so that, that would be me as an artist. I'm trying to develop my, my actual accompanying skills, which is a little more challenging. So above and beyond, I'm, I'm probably a vocal specialist. And I think part of this is from my uh, early background, which was a classical background. And I, I've, I've mentioned before, I didn't used to mention it, but my great great aunt was Dame Nellie Melba. So I've always had, there's always been a very strong opera um, affection in my family. My mother used to sing um, amateur opera, as did my stepfather. So um, a renewed interest in this early work by Dame Nellie also, which is very high drama. So from that, I've actually got into some of the Sophie Tucker repertoire, which we did in the concert. I have to be very dramatic. So with this collaboration, which I've called the Hot Town Tigers, you know, it's kind of a fun name. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and a joy to have um, three of my favorite musicians, which of course, Enrico Tommaso, uh, Ewan Bleach and Joplin Parnell. Working with like-minded people really brings, it, it brings everything up several notches in fact, and it creates this incredibly authentic sound which is something I've always craved. Um, so this collaboration is great and I hope that it can be the start of many other um, such collaborations. They're wonderful characters, personalities, vivacious. It's just an absolute hoot working with them. So it's been an absolute thrill to, to be able to present this and bringing in some of the people I work with quite regularly, like Danielle Price and Ross Baird, Ross Milligan, of course, Roy Percy and Stu. He's um, really got an incredible drum kit, which is perfect for this. This new project is actually probably the basis of probably three other projects at this stage. So I've kind of offered um, a, a variety that are all related but there are some differences which could be explored more fully. So Annette Hanshaw has always been one of my number one favorite vocalists, but when I first moved here 10 years ago, nobody here knew who she was. So I would go to a jam session and say, can we do Ain't No Sweet Man? And, and the people wouldn't know that. Um, so it's, that's a very different vibe from the other offering within the project today, which was Clarence Williams. Clarence Williams is sort of the grandfather of early uh, jazz and blues really in, in many ways. Um, his mother, Rico told me, was actually Lulu who owned Mahogany Hall. So there's a direct relationship there with Storyville. And uh, of course, Louis Armstrong used to perform uh, with Clarence Williams as long as, and uh, Sidney Bechet, I think all the greats performed with him. So he was a very prolific writer and performer and arranger. And so, I picked some from his Washboard 5 repertoire a little more, so it's a bit of a hotter sound. Um, and they're quite fun songs, so again, that's another project potentially. And then I thought, let's chuck in something else here. If we're going to go for this really old music, let's go for the grand dame, Sophie Tucker. And it's she's a very different approach. She was very theatrical. In fact, a word that I learned about her, she was a Stanelian performer meaning very loud and powerful and direct and very much of the vaudeville tradition where it, it was very, very polished and extremely over the top. And she, I find her an incredible woman. She's absolutely, she was at the beginning of everything, basically. I mean, wax cylinders, talkies, everything. She was right there at the helm and a huge star in her own right. But for me, the joy of being able to perform two of her very well-known songs was, was great, even though it was a slight, it's slightly unusual approach to it. In fact, on one of the charts, it says, asterisk, do not swing at all. So it was not swinging at all, which is very different from everything else that we're doing today. So um, Sophie Tucker, there's another potential spin-off from that, which would be very dramatic and very exciting. Two 
And about Smokey Joe Well gather around But I tell you all About a guy you should know The folks all call him Jerry the Junker From down in Chinatown He's deaf and down and blind and lame He still kicks a gong around Oh, Jerry the Junker Jerry the Junker Jerry the Junker, Jerry the Junker. Raggedy clothes and old torn shoes How that boy can sing the blues from Jerry the Junker. Hymns to die. He faced the crowd and laughed out loud and he spit in the judge's eye. They strapped him to the electric chair. It was time for him to die. Ten thousand volts shot through him, but the man he did die. Oh, Jerry the Junker. Jerry the Junker. Jerry the Junker. Raggedy clothes and old town shoes. How that man can sing the blues. Misery just seems to who's from Jerry Till they heard the warden cry. Hey, what's the use? Shut off that juice. My electric bill's too high. For days and days, a thousand ways, they tried to bump him off. Then one cold day, he passed away. He died from the whooping car. Oh, Jerry the Junkie. Jerry the Junkie. Jerry the Junkie. Jerry the junkie. Ragged clothes and old torn shoes. How that 